Okay, hello, am I? I don't see a clock yet, at least. <coughs> I don't, it's still not live. Oh, I'm live. Great. Thank you. Hi, this is Terry McCatton, um, West County Plastic Surgeons of Washington University in St. Louis. I'm just going to change my background here. Hope everybody's staying nice and warm. I think it was minus four degrees Fahrenheit, which is minus 20 Celsius earlier this morning. I'm from Canada and I'm not used to that kind of temperature. Um, today we will be discussing uh, fat grafting and we'll try to focus on face, but I'll also look for your comments as we go along. So if you have specific questions, um, if I'm able to see those, I, I will happily answer those. So, um, so essentially fat grafting, the definition of that is that we essentially use your own fat to augment other parts of your body. So essentially what happens is we use some form of liposuction, which is the uh, planned removal of fatty tissue from other parts of your body. And that fat is then typically processed in some way in the operating room so that we are separating away fat cells from other types of tissue. And then that fat is then injected uh, into areas where you have less volume but would like more to improve contours to provide structure as well. So um, there are many different forms of liposuction that we can use but generally speaking the area that we are treating is uh, first treated with a, a, a what's called tumescing solution which is a local anesthetic and it's designed to reduce pain and reduce bleeding. Fat cells are then sucked out from that area. And then those fat cells are collected, usually in some form of a container. And then from there, we do the processing. And there's lots of different um, ways to approach that um, and different uh, styles that people use. But in general, what happens is we want to re-inject uh, the fat cells and typically uh, stem cells that are within the fat uh, and uh, other types of um, materials or proteins that can help with uh, the regenerative potential, try to help those uh, fat cells take. So often that means that we'll be doing something called centrifuge, meaning we spin the fat cells to separate the different layers of fat and fluids out. Um, also, will, that will allow us to remove serum or blood products so that we have a more pure concentrate of fat um, as well as uh, some of the uh, valuable material associated with fat that we can then inject. Another key thing is we need to make sure that what we're injecting is fine and small enough that it can easily pass through a needle and uh, be placed into a parts of the body that we want the fat. So then the next question will be, you know, so, so why would somebody want fat grafting? What, what, what would you want it for? So in the face, um, as you likely know, we often will use fillers, filling products to try and uh, address creases, areas where uh, fat has uh, become atrophic or, or, or moved or descended. So for example, in through the, what's called the nasolabial folds or the junction between the cheek and the lip, Oftentimes as we age, um, fat, which tends to be in a more youthful position higher up on our, on our cheek, will drop down, creating some of this fullness, some of these uh, jowls lower down on our, on our uh, jawline as well. Sometimes also we develop a triangle between the cheek and the chin, and this pre-jowl triangle is another area that we'd like to address. And there's many other areas than that. Often we can develop creases underneath our eyelids that can also be addressed. Sometimes people feel like they have a thinner lip that can be addressed. Um, and also sometimes people have asymmetry, meaning that there are differences between sides where we can add a little bit of fat to try to uh, augment that as well. So there's lots of reasons as we age, typically we go from sort of a more inverted triangle look to um, a more triangular look. So in other words, tissue that used to be up here drops down as we age. So we try to add the volume up here to try to restore some of that youthful appearance. So one way to do that is by using uh, filling products. Uh, but then the other one is to use fat. So the nice things about fat are often 
it is coupled with doing liposuction. So not only are you getting the fat somewhere where you want it, but we can also potentially remove fat from areas where you don't want it. Um, also, fat is still part of you, so it's your own tissue. So you do avoid some of that um, foreign body reaction as well. Uh, and then also fat does tend to stay longer than most of the other filling products. Um, the, the downsides of fat grafting are that there, there is still some unreliability in terms of how much of that fat will actually stay. Fat tends to stay best in areas that are looser, in areas with really good blood supply, um, in areas where there's already a lot of healthy tissue to accommodate the fat. So the face is a great area because the tissue tends to be looser, the blood supply tends to be very good. So fat grafting to the face is typically very effective and the, um, the amount of fat that takes tends to be pretty high. Um, other areas where people will consider fat grafting can include the breast. Uh, so rather than use breast implants or in addition to using breast implants, fat can be injected to try to smoothen out contours and, and, and avoid using an implant. Now, um, typically fat grafting to the breast does not give as much shape or volume as breast implants do, uh, but often fat grafting can be used sort of as an adjunct to an implant to provide um, a, a more uh, uh, natural look, a more sloped, uh, softer look to a breast augmentation than implants alone, particularly in thinner people. And then also fat can, grafting can be used elsewhere. Another really common one is, is in the buttocks. And so there's a lot of discussion about Brazilian butt lifts and fat grafting in the, to, to the buttock area. The buttock area is, is a good place to inject fat because there is quite a bit of uh, well vascularized or tissue with really good blood supply that can accommodate the fat. But uh, injecting to the buttock area um, also has to be done very, very carefully. Um, one of the biggest risks of injecting fat anywhere in the body, whether that be the uh, face or the buttock most commonly, would be that you don't inject the fat into a blood vessel. Um, injection of fat into an artery, for example, can lead to an embolization, meaning that it can block blood flow going into a target area. Um, that can lead to death of the skin, for example. And then injecting fat into a vein can uh, be very devastating. It can lead to blindness. It can also lead to uh, what's called a fat embolism, which can um, uh, get into the lung and, and can be fatal. And so uh, fat embolism is another uh, very serious thing that we try and um, address. So to avoid that, we are very careful about where fat gets injected in terms of avoiding veins. We also use softer tipped cannulas, so we're not puncturing veins as well. Um, so a lot of that has to do with knowing where we're injecting, how much we're injecting, and the type of equipment we're using to inject. So I do see a comment here, or a question here, can injecting fat give you lumps? So the short answer is yes, it definitely can. So that's again why um, great care has to be taken in order to minimize uh, those lumps. So um, why do people get lumps? So the the most common reason people get lumps is because fat is um, injected, either too much fat is injected, too big of a clump of fat is injected, or fat is injected into an area that doesn't really want to accept the fat. So injecting fat into tight areas, areas with p poor blood supply, areas with more scar tissue, um, or injecting larger volumes of fat can all lead to lumps. Um, and what the lumps are typically is either they are um, clumps of fat cells or more commonly what happens is over time those clumps of fat cells, those cells die um, and they, the fat cells are essentially filled with almost like oil and uh, that essentially coalesces and it forms a cyst. And that's one of the main reasons why people can get lumps from fat grafting. It's also one of the reasons why, uh, for example, in the breast, we're very careful with how much uh, fat is injected 
because if you get lumps in the breast, um, even though you know it, th that is not breast cancer, if you feel a lump in the breast, that can be um, you know very uh, in induce a lot of stress and anxiety for our patients, and so um, we want to make sure that we can reduce that. But if somebody does get uh, fat grafting and a lump in the breast um, using a mammography or ultrasound. Um, it is pretty, uh, those are pretty accurate ways to confirm that what is uh, injected is fat necrosis or due to the fat injection and not something concerning like cancer. Um, if there is any further concern over that, then a biopsy can be performed to remove that area and to evaluate it um, and make sure that in fact it's just some uh, dead fat cells and not cancer. But you're right, the f that um, injecting fat can cause lumps um, and that's why we have to be careful with how much and where we inject it. So in terms of the face, the most common places to inject. So. Um, one of the most common things to do, kind of going from the top down, is in the temporal regions. So oftentimes people can have almost a more wasted appearance, especially if they're relatively thin and can be hollowed in the temporal region. So that's actually a nice place to inject fat. It can, the fat can be injected um, behind the ear or it can be injected within the hair so that the uh, small incisions used to inject the fat can be well concealed. And so fat can be fairly easily injected into that area just to provide a more smooth contour. And that's a nice alternative to using fillers. Another common place that we will inject fat will be in what we call the mid-face area. And so around the cheekbone area, what can happen over time is the fat can drop down uh, from up over the cheekbone area to down below, and that can lead to hollowing um, and prominence of these folds. So by adding fat, and we inject the fat right down um, underneath the muscle tissue just over the bone layer, um, it can add that volume and prop everything up and help to really provide a lift to the soft tissue in, in the middle of your face. Uh, sometimes that will be um, uh, incorporated with injection of fat into the folds uh, between the cheek and the lip as well. And both can be done and that can again sort of restore that mid-face volume. Also sometimes if there is a more prominent crease between the lower eyelid and the, and the mid-face or the cheek area, that can also be injected into that area to provide a smoother contour. In that area, we have to be really careful um, not to over-inject as well to avoid lumpiness since the skin there is so thin. Um, and then uh, other areas where the fat can be injected would be into this pre-jowl triangle area to try to build that up a little bit. But as I say, in addition to that, there, there are many other applications where fat can conceivably be injected to try to improve that overall look. In the in the face, where we're, we typically are injecting 5, 10, 20, sometimes even more 40, 50, 60 cc's of fatty tissue um, to build up the face. And often that can be accompanied with a facelift procedure, brow lift, or other facial cosmetic procedures. If we are doing fat grafting, for example, for the buttock area, we tend to inject a lot more fat than that because to make a difference in terms of visible improvement or projection of the buttock area, a lot more fat is taken. So the typical places where we will remove fat from uh, can include the abdomen, the flanks, the bra roll area, the inner thighs, the outer thighs. I would say that those would be the most common places from where we remove fat, largely because they often will have uh, the largest amounts of fat that our patients don't want around, so they're happy for us to remove it. Uh, but then also, um, those areas also tend to also be um, regions where the fat is pretty accessible as well. Um, when somebody has liposuction to remove the fat, they will typically wear a compressive garment to try and keep everything nice and tight as well. Um, so, so that's a brief synopsis on fat grafting. I think that, you know, in general, I would recommend that you see a board-certified plastic surgeon uh, before considering fat grafting. 
the types of things that you're going to want to address are what parts of the body you're injecting to, what are the safety concerns related to that, how long you expect that that fat can last, what kind of effect you can expect that it'll give, uh, potentially what other procedures can accompany the fat grafting as well, and uh, what kind of style of fat grafting are we going to use, how are we going to process the fat. So those are some of the types of questions that um, you'd want to ask your plastic surgeon when contemplating fat grafting. And then of course you want to know what some of the alternative strategies are. Is there some sort of a surgery that could accompany it or uh, potentially give you a better result? Is there a reason not to just use a, f a filler in some cases? Um, if you're considering the breast, um, what would be the pros and cons of fat grafting to the breast versus a breast implant versus some kind of combination of those? Um, yeah, so, so, th so those are the major things with regard to fat grafting. I certainly, oh, I just see another one here. If you just remove fat from the stomach area, will you need a tummy tuck? That's a great question. So it really depends on how much laxity your skin has. So in other words, and it depends on how much fat you remove. So in some folks that are good candidates for liposuction of the belly, regardless of whether looking for fat grafting or not, um, the tummy is, or the stomach area is a good area for um, removing the fat. And if, if there's not stretch marks and the skin is not loose on the tummy, um, and this is more common in younger patients, the skin will retract and tighten up a little bit and you won't need a tummy tuck in that area. But if um, you already have more stretch marks and the skin is relatively looser in that area, then if you remove the fat from the stomach, then essentially you're further deflating that area. And then that can cause to lose more looseness. If you already have stretch marks, and if you're a bit older, the skin is probably not gonna bounce back as well. And then you're right, sometimes people do end up choosing to do a tummy tuck. Areas where the uh, skin will bounce back better than the tummy, would be the flank area and the bra roll area. Those are areas where the skin tends to retract um, more effectively and would be less likely that you need some type of a surgery to tighten up the skin afterwards. But that's a great question uh, for sure. And sometimes what we do is we plan it. So we actually remove the fat from the belly area use it for fat grafting, and then we do a tummy tuck all at the same time. So that's another option as well. All right. Well, uh, there are no more questions at this point. Again, I really appreciate everyone tuning in. I, I hope you stay nice and warm and safe. And um, if you have any further questions, we'd love to see you here at West County Plastic Surgeons. Uh, be well. And uh, again, please consider tuning in for our next Facebook Live event. Thank you.